morning, everybody. Yes, Monday morning, first thing. What do you do? Well, you get up and you turn us on and then we're there to keep you company through the start of your day. And on a Monday, it's especially important because who knows? You need more help on a Monday than any other day, right? You've got to make it through that Monday. You've got to power through it. And if you don't have us there to help you and hold your hand, God knows what could happen. You could be hit by a bus or something. Man. You know? Yeah. Just like a-, a candle in the wind. Yes, exactly. Like that Elton John, Elton's John's songs. <laughs> Isn't that how it goes? That Elton John's songs? Yes, about ladies and- Dianas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, the original for Marilyn Monroe, but yes, he reworked it in a hurry uh, for Princess Diana's funeral. Mm-hmm. So, good morning. It is the. Uh, it's already the twenty first of February. It's a week left of Feb. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, and really. then and then we're into the the last month of the first quarter. Good quarter. Quarter K O T A. That's what we're in for. The. F- the you know, the funniest thing is, um, February, I know th- this isn't a leap year, is it? No. Is it? No, it isn't. Okay, so when is the next leap year? I, I don't know. Oh, look it up, man. I'm not planning on asking anyone to marry me, so I haven't been checking. Uh, is that is that the only reason you bother to check anymore? What's the only time that women are allowed to ask men to marry them? Supposedly. Supposedly. But I mean, <laughs> someone like you would ask any time anyway. I mean, there are lots of very empowered women these days who wouldn't have a problem with asking some guy to marry them if that's what they wanted and wouldn't have to be a leap year, Leanne. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I know when you pull your glasses down towards the end of your nose, you're very serious. What's going on? I'm looking for the next leap year, but... Oh, my God. Next year's... One of those... Yeah? 28 days. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2024. Oh, okay. So it's still a long way away. Hmm. Year after next. All right. Well, then that's when you've got to make the move, Leanne. That's when you're going to you in a bus start with your you have to marry me. And, and you must use those words. You must go, you have to marry me. And you then must. see what happens. <laughs> you, you absolutely must. There is there's no other way you have to marry me. <laughs> with a gun with a gun right to the small of his back. That's what you gotta do. All right. Hmm, so Michael him. says we click you on, but we expect you to turn us on. Ho 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 ho! Very nice. <laughs> uh, the world ended a while ago, and we're still here, so that's all good. Oh, okay. I didn't know that the world had ended. Good morning, sunshine. That the earth says hello. Oh, okay. Wow, nice. Lots of people full of happiness this morning, huh? <laughs> yes. Sean says, "Morning, guys." Uh, can't wait for March. Then spring starts in Bulgaria. Had too much of this Europe winter. Ooh, Bulgaria. Um, I've been to I've been to Hungary, which is near enough to Bulgaria. Um, they have those really depressing, really grey, really dark, you know, Eastern European winters. And ugh, you can only imagine what that's like in in Bulgaria. Holy shit! Poor you, Sean. Send us pictures. We want to. We want to enjoy your misery for a couple of months more. <laughs> but yeah, I have noticed that the, the days are getting a little bit shorter now. And it's, mm-hmm. not as, it's not as bright first thing in the morning when we wake up to do the show, even though our time is exactly the same, right? Yeah, uh, have to rely a little bit more on artificial light. Kurik, kurik, So Ryan and uh, MKT, that's Bulelo, are actually... In Philadelphia, they just wrapped up the NBA All-Star Game on their way to the train right now. Nice. Mm. I think, where did they have the NBA All-Star Game this year? Is it in Philly? Because I'm not sure. I've been, I've been sort of following, obviously I follow them on social media. I'm Ryan and Bulelo. But I'm not sure where in America they are right now. So we're trying to uh, to figure out a time and a place where it'll be convenient for them to talk to us. They obviously can't do that from the train. But we'll see when they when they get to a, a, a hotel or a place where they can, and then we'll get some updates from Bulelo. I was actually thinking about him this morning. In, he's in the American cold because it's not pleasant there at the moment. So It's fine once you're inside. Yeah. Not like, not like um, South Africa where it's still as wintry inside <laughs> as it yeah, is well, out. We don't have insulation in our houses and all the rest. No. Oh, there, he says, is there in Cleveland? There we ah, go. Cleveland. 
and 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 Kuchle is on the ball. He says the All Star Game in Cleveland. Cleveland is a terrible place. Oh no. Ohio, yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. It's just, it's a boring, boring city, horrible city. Anyway, good luck to you guys. Um, and give us a proper update, James. Tell tell that lazy Mbulelo we need him um on the show to give us some insight into what you've been up to and give us some background. Let us know what's going on. So joining us in a little while is someone who was on the show with us not too long ago, and people loved having him on, so we're bringing him back, and that is uh, Sunil Osman. He's going to be with us just now. We'll check in with him. But there's quite a lot to catch up with. Um, over the weekend, there was lots and lots of news, and uh, we'll, we'll get to some of those stories. Leanne has some of them. There's one story about a guy who is um, in a critical condition after his house and four cars caught fire during his daughter's birthday party. I mean, can you imagine a more chaotic situation than that? So we'll find out about that story just now. And in case you haven't been paying attention, the city of China has been going around, and they've been collecting outstanding bills from people who haven't paid their their rates and taxes and they're well, basically they're cutting everyone off basically yeah and they, they 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 come to your offices or your premises or your house and they switch off your power and they will not reconnect you until you've paid all your bills and apparently it is working like a charm um people who have not yeah. paid you know millions and millions over the last couple of years are suddenly going oh billions these guys yeah yeah well, i mean Listen, Leanne, you don't have to bring up my bills now. I mean, I was going to bring those up later. <laughs> no, yes, to be fair. No billions. To be fair, it, it, yes, it's 17 billion. Correct. Correct. That's quite a lot of money. So we'll find out exactly what they've been up to. And uh, let's welcome Sunil. I think he's there. He's ready to join us. Hey, Sunil, how are you, man? Yay, I'm here. I'm great. Thank you. How are you guys? <laughs> Good. We managed to connect. I, I saw you there trying to connect up with uh, with the show this morning. I thought, oh, he's having some troubles, but it's fine. How was your yeah. weekend? It was very, very good. Very relaxing. Had a very busy Saturday. Sunday was spent making TikToks and just uh, having fun with myself. Luckily, Andrew. When you, that sounds <laughs> that sounds really dirty. I was just having fun with myself, like always, just like Leander's. That's exactly <laughs> what I didn't expect to hear this morning. So. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, TikToks, you, you, you're giving that a full go, hey? What I, use, I use the platform. It is a lot of fun. I mean, I've got three different accounts on it. Uh -huh. um, oh, yeah. one I use just for my book. One I use just for my book and Reiki. The one's a mixed account where I do silly Afrikaans jokes because people think Indian people can't speak. And then um, I... My is not like I've got seven million followers, but at the same time the engagement's been very good. I use it to create, and it's say a lot of time because before I used to have to post something individually on Instagram, Facebook, Facebook yeah. page, LinkedIn, Twitter. Now I make one video, I will download it, do the motivation or do the comedy, and just share it across all platforms. Saves me time, and you know, in yeah, the I mean, end, that... time is not very. No, but that I listen, dude. If you're going to do any of it, do it, do it that way. Then you, you don't waste so much time. And I agree. Like uh, posting shit's just a pain in the backside. Uh, and frankly, especially if you don't post every day, you don't post stuff every week at least. Then you you, you just see like people just drop off. They stop taking an interest, and you, yeah, you're absolutely. wasting your time. So if absolutely. you're a content I mean, creator, you, yeah. this is what you have to do. You have to make this stuff. Yeah, I mean, my, my one big problem on my main account, which says that has like a small amount of followers, like 30,000, is that I don't have a specific niche. So I literally do completely mixed content. Mm. One day you'll see me looking at a random oyster that looks like a vagina they're dripping lemon into, and I'm doing a reaction to it. Or I'll be doing a comedy lip sync while I'll do my own content. So it's mixed. It's very mixed. But, right. but like you said, it saves you time. You know? It saves you a lot of time. Well, listen, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that there are people using it. I just always find it very suspicious that the Chinese don't let their own people use TikTok, but they let everyone else do it. I mean, is that not like a red flag? Is that not the biggest warning sign of all? It's like, here we are, world. You guys play with this great platform, this great platform you put all your shit on, but we won't allow our kids to do it. Sorry. Come well, on. you see, yeah. they, they were very clever about it because when they first started it, um, the type of content through the algorithm that would reach people's For You page um, no. was 
stuff that was really significant. So students doing well, um, people excelling, uh, yes. that sort of thing. And then when they let it out to the waste, <laughs> um, the, st- the type of stuff that makes it through the algorithm is people dancing and doing silly shit. So, uh, you know, if, if it's used to showcase what, what countries are doing, then it certainly put China in a better light than it does the rest of the world, which was clever yeah. on their part. Yeah. yeah, no, no, uh, no dancing from me. No dancing from me. I tried a Bollywood dance yesterday. I found a tree. I ran around it, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I, I spent Thursday and Friday at Sun City, which I haven't done for years. And the place really is. It's still, it's still a fun kind of escape from reality in South Africa. I, I always used to think of it as our Las Vegas, and maybe in its heyday, it, it, it kind of lived up to that moniker, that rubric. But now, I mean, it's you know, it's a couple of years old and. The place is a little bit weather beaten and a couple. I mean, I just, <laughs> no, it's it's so no, it's, I just, um, um, they've got this this new restaurant they've opened up there called Legends, and as you go in, they've got posters of all the great concerts that they've had there, which is awesome because you know a lot of that history has gone into the memory hole, and and unless you were there, and unless you're one of those people who studies these things, you wouldn't know. Mm. But I mean, yeah, it's been around since 1979, makes it 42 years old. 43 yeah, it's years. a couple of years. It's phenomenal. Um, but now the last time we spoke, you had done a lot of the water slidey stuff. And then oh you were off to quad bike. And Gord, <laughs> strangely enough, was worried about you falling off and injuring yourself. Yeah. How did it go? So, Sunil, just because you're laughing, let me, let me just explain in case there were some other people who didn't hear about this. So what I decided to do is, um, is Ben, who's been on the show also with us for, for a long time. And, and I decided he booked this probably back in January. He's like, can we going to go on those Sun City water slides? Because he, he just went to that water park in Abu Dhabi last year, which is apparently phenomenal. It's called Yas Island. And, yes. Um, yes. Yes. And apparently, <laughs> that, <laughs> apparently that place is just absolutely phenomenal. So anyway, we went, we basically went from left to right on all the rides in the Valley of the Waves. And we did, uh, I don't want to exaggerate, we probably did on the first day, because we only got there at lunchtime, just, you know, 25 of each one or, or 20 of each wow. one. It was ridiculous. I mean, I was so tired on Thursday night that I just, I fell into bed and went to sleep at nine, which doesn't happen <laughs> easily. <laughs> then woke up on Friday morning. Um, first thing we did was have some breakfast after the show. Then I went and uh, I walked that, that Gary Play golf course, with, well, through the holes, because there was, there was some um, professional women's tournament on like some tour that, that you know from all over the world these women who uh, were competing and uh like a really really good one and that was fun what two two or three holes of that and then because we had to kill time then went to the quad biking which i still do and and you go into the game reserve so you, you're literally riding around between zebras and giraffes and uh water buck and kudu and that kind of thing it's phenomenal right but we did I, I think it's safe to say about 20 kilometers. Jeez. What? I mean, I got back. And, yeah, yeah. I was covered in dust. Like you, you are covered in a layer of dust. Your mm-hmm. face, it almost looks like I was doing blackface and I would have been canceled for that if anyone had taken it. <laughs> oh, jeez. No selfies after that. And then went straight from there, straight to the the Valley of Waves again and, and went up and down. Listen, listen. Oh, so- my, I, I've done more cardio in those two days than I have done in the last three years. Did you cleanse your body from the dust in the Valley of the Waves? Well, yeah. I mean, just in and out of the water. Did that Temple of Courage thing like 10 times. Um, the one where your a... asshole swallows your quasi. Correct. There's a new one. There's a new one where you kind of stand in this thing. And so you're standing up upright. And then the floor kind of disappears under you, and you just slip down this the chute. Oh my and it goodness! Goes, it goes so fast; the whole thing's over in like two and a half seconds. But wow. man, it's fun. so. I had, so a, I've had got, a really. I've got a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so do you wear a speedo? Or do you wear like little shorts? No, no I got I, not little shorts. I got like a pair of um, swimming shorts. They're like okay. they come to the mid thigh, and. You know what? What uh, you know those ones that there's a South African um, uh, brand called Granadilla. I'm sure you've seen them. Yes, they yes, make yes, yes. awesome stuff, and I've supported them for years because I love their stuff. 
and um, I've got a pair of those. So I was wearing those most of the time. <clears throat> and, Doesn't the and speed just, push it up? Like no, I mean, listen, it's there, there, there are two rides where that happens, and you basically, if you cross your feet in front of you, then it doesn't become an issue. You guys are so amateur. You just obviously never done enough of this. <laughs> you, don't put me in the same boat. Slides. I I've been in the unfortunate position of having my bikini bottoms disappear, not just under my stomach, That's but so um, through every other orifice. Yeah. Well, listen, it was so nice to just be childish for the weekend and do this stuff. Um, you know, you, you don't you don't really get to do things like this. And I reckon you've got to keep yourself young. It's like also you've got to push yourself to do things that are outside of your comfort zone. And there are a lot of people I was thinking while I was doing it, this would be a great thing to take my nephews to do because they're now, what, eight and five. Oh, yeah. They would love it. So now I have some reason to go back there again. But you know what? It is still fun. And it's one of those places in South Africa. I mean, I haven't been for years. It's probably been about six years since I was in Sun City. And it, we used to be there all the time. Remember, I used to film idols there. So mm. I know the, like the back of my hand. But it is, it's a definite um, number on the checklist for everybody who's got If you've got time and you've got nothing planned and you want to do just a weekend, you know, it's fun. It's something nice to do. Anyway, um, there was a woman who Wait. went down the slide and lost both her bikini top and her wig, says Tim. Oh, me. Lord. Hilarious. I don't know if it's a good idea to go to a water park with a hair wig. accessories, with a wig. head accessories. Yeah. yeah. Your whole weave will come off. That's not so good. <laughs> Jeez. But you can wear the Grenadella shorts and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listen to this. Let's just talk because you know about this stuff, um, Sunil. Some nights um, I've noticed that I don't sleep as well, and some nights I sleep really well. And we've always had this conversation on the show the next morning. And, you know, a lot of people who listen to us, they're sending comments like, oh, no, but it was a full moon last night. So what do you know about this full moon effect? Because I know you've actually looked it up and done some, yes. some reading on this. What, what do we know about the full moon and the effect that it has on people? So the most recent full moon was in Leo um, and... I don't, I'm trying to get to a point where I'm not too deep because sometimes people don't understand what I'm saying. But in a short sort of summary, there's been a lot of energetic pools and people are going through a lot mentally, as we all know. But also they have been losing sleep patterns. They've been having old traumas creeping up, whether it be a trauma from, from flying, whether it be a phobia, whether it be fighting against somebody or your past will come up. So all these thoughts are happening in people's mind right now. And what it is, is that those that are more sort of awakened or more aware are being affected by it more and they, they know more about it. And they are having to just do a lot of reflection and just sort of find themselves again. And yeah. that is keeping people up at night. That's keeping people up at night. Jeez, dude. I mean, do you think that... It, it makes a difference to um, to everybody or just to people who have traumas? Because, I mean, I, you know, I find like some nights I just, I, for some reason, and it's got nothing to do with how tired I am. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you just, you just can't get to sleep, right? And sometimes yes. you can't, it's real. It's a struggle to wake up. Yes. Um, how much do you think all of this stuff has an effect on us? Because I often think, like as much as I'm not a big believer in astrology, what I find interesting is that we're on this rock that is spinning at a certain speed around the sun, and we're also spinning on our own axis. And all of these, these massive astronomical bodies, they must have some impact on yeah. the, the rhythms of our own bodies because we're not immune to this. It's like, for example, you know, the seasons, which we now take for granted. And you know, I mean, humans have always understood that there are certain seasons in the year. And we were talking about how the days are getting longer when, when Leanne and I were just waiting for you to join us earlier. But the fact that you, I mean, you can't ignore that these huge planets and these massive stars all over the galaxy are, are not impacting us and don't have an effect like that. I mean, the moon has an effect yeah. on, the, on the tides, for heaven's sake. So exactly. it, would make, it would make sense that we get affected by these things. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out how much it affects us. Well, like, yeah. Is there a way we can figure out how much of that is, is the planets or the, the stars yeah. or whatever, yeah. and how much of it is us? Yeah. So it's not just about traumas. It's also about finding the off switch. I mean, in this world we're living in right now, it's always go, 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 go. And just because the world is moving fast doesn't mean that you have to as well. 
And you very rightly said that the, the moon does affect the tides and that's energetic pull. And that is got things to do with gravity. You will find that a lot of people are suddenly having back aches or headaches or stomach aches because there's a lot of releasing that needs to happen. And people are, some people are coming to it. Even the skeptical skeptics are contacting healers like myself and going, look, I'm sorry, I didn't believe you, but I really need you right now. Um, so the ease that, and so it's not about how much trauma you had or what the trauma was or what you're going through in your life. Sometimes it's just about pausing and going, right, this is happening right now. Mm. I am affected by the moon. I sound a bit crazy. I might be a werewolf or something, but hey, let me just take it as it is. A werewolf. Uh, Leanne just got very excited. She's always she's been telling us for years she's a werewolf, and we never we never believed her. Well, this is why I, I was telling you <clears throat> just before we started that I was plucking my chin hairs. I have to every full moon because they grow like wildfire. God, that's so sexy. Why don't you tell us more stories about how um how you have how to, you pluck uh, your hairs? Yeah. Jesus, that's disgusting. Uh, Michael says, "Come on, none of what uh, Sunil just said can be verified." Surely Gareth was asking for some actual research on the subject of the full moon's impact on humans, not someone's new age fantasies. This is um, the kind of skepticism you were talking about, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I get, I get this kind of things a lot and you learn eventually to go, you know what? It is what it is. You can believe it if you don't want to believe it. I'm not going to try and prove anything, mm. but the day that it clicks is the day you will come back Dude, and say, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry. You know, Carl says, uh, Gareth, I swear to God, if you start believing in astrology, I'm out. Well, you don't have to worry, Carl. I'm not going to suddenly become, uh, as, as Michael put it, a new ager. But I like, I like hearing different theories on these things from different people. You know, just like, for example, we, um, we talk about, and we have during COVID, we spoke about all the different theories people had about that. And I heard some of these that were complete nonsense, some of them that were very sensible, and some that were in between. Um, I don't know why I don't sleep well some nights and why I do others. So I thought, let's hear what Sunil's thoughts on this are. He might have some insight into it. Doesn't mean I'm going to necessarily take what he says or what Leanne or anyone else says and, you know, wholesale put it into my life and then start yeah. it, you know, applying so, only so that. What, whatever it's any healer, no. look, I'm not an astrologist. I, 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 I'm no. not going to even begin to think I know anything about star signs or crystals oh. or whatever else. But Jesus, what I can no. say is that when people hear these kinds of things, all you've got to do is take what resonates with you. The moment you start questioning things, you're yeah. wasting your time because some things are not meant to be understood. You're meant to just surrender and accept. Yes, you can try and understand it. And that's why I respect people like Gareth and Leanne and everybody else because you are where you are. You believe what you want to believe. If it mm. works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, great. If it resonates, great. If it doesn't, so what? There's always space for someone else's opinion. Exactly. There's always a space to learn something new. And yes, I mean, the, you know, there's a difference between knowledge and how someone feels about something. But you figure that out yourself. I'm not going to put it all out there. I, I give you the menu, and then you, you choose from the menu. Absolutely. Might, and if, everybody's be, on their own journey. We just need right. to know where they are on that journey. Well, there might be interviews that I have um, have done with people who, you know, Someone in the audience will think, well, what a waste of time. That person was a complete moron. And then there might be other ones where people go, oh, that was one of the best guests you've had. You've got to have them back. You choose for yourself. I mean, I'm going to try and give you as, as wide a scope and, you know, as many different things on the menu as we possibly can. And you get to choose. Cheryl yeah. says, this is real. Everyone is having a spiritual awakening and especially snow moon and the next new moon, which is on the 3rd of March. I don't even know what a snow moon is, but thanks, Cheryl. I don't know what that is. Um, Cheryl is very right. A lot of people are going through a lot of things right now. And some people are aware of it, but some people are not. Um, listen, just, yeah. Let, let, me, let me ask you this, Sunil, because I'm not, <clears throat> I'm by no means becoming, um, you know, someone who's, who's uh, a different person to the person I've been so far. But I have found that there's, there's a lot of stuff that is starting to interest me now that didn't interest me. 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And I've been very into kind of the material world and understanding how things work and what it's made of and all of that. You know, all the, when I say material world, I mean, you know, the, the substance, the physical being, the, the kind of the scientific stuff, the, the, yes. the, the stuff that you can work out in numbers and, and, mm. and in time and space and all of those things. And I'm finding maybe it's just a, an aspect of getting older. 
and I don't know if you feel the same way, Leanne, but I'm more interested now in slightly less, um, less slightly less uh, practical and physical stuff, and slightly more of the, the 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 kind of what is it all for? Where are we all going? And that's why I think it might have something to do with age, because I'm not interested as much in you know the obvious stuff that we have answers for already. There are so many things mm. we don't have answers for, and that yeah. stuff interests me now more. And I don't think that it, it's very sensible to spend your life going through the, the motions of understanding the material universe without being a little bit curious about some some of the other stuff, you know? Absolutely. I think, I, so I, Gareth, I think I've just become more... His... Sorry. Sorry, Sunil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, ga... <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so Gareth is... I haven't been a co-host for ages. Gareth is, Gareth is on his own, own awakening, awakening journey. journey. So what Gareth, you are doing right now, Gareth, is you're actually going through your own awakening journey. Because I can't tell you what you need to do for your awakening journey. Because what interests you, your heart, your soul, your whatever it may be, is your journey. And that's what people mm. don't understand. Well, I mean, some, some people are going to say, well, you've lost your mind and you're going all woo-woo and all the rest. Yeah. But, but uh, you know... Like we we can sit and have a conversation about physics. We can we could talk about you know geography or geopolitics or any of that stuff, which we do on this show. That's ninety nine percent of what we do. But you've got to have a little bit of space, and I'm making more and more space in my life for the stuff that is numinous, that is more difficult to understand, and that that doesn't always have straightforward answers. And that's also why I like to hear from people like you, Sunil. What were you going to say, Leanne? I was going to say I I go through phases. Um, at the moment, I'm. I think I think COVID has had a lot to do with it. I'm just focusing completely on the science. That's all I want to know about. Mm. I want facts and figures. I want proven stuff. I want, you know, medical correct, medically correct terminology and scientific proof. Um, I'm just kind of in that block at the moment. So maybe I'm not becoming more self-aware or developing in that way. But there are times where things, you know, will happen in succession. And I think, well, there has to be something that drove that beyond um, the numbers. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I mean, look, look, at, look at Sunil smiling like, ah, I knew you'd eventually come around, you fucking skeptic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You way right, well, you. <laughs> let's, let's just talk about this. I have, um, and this is a big problem that you've got too. And I don't want us to sound like those old white people who moan about potholes. But Jesus. I've got a pothole outside the the entrance to the, the place I live. It is it is slowly every day it gets bigger. I promise you now I could fit a tractor tire into it, and and we all no no no, no you, you you don't laugh yet Sunil because it's going to happen to you. Um, <laughs> there was a there, I'm on this neighborhood WhatsApp. You know everybody's on a neighborhood WhatsApp group these days, and I think since COVID we all have accepted that's part of the way we we discuss things with our neighbors now. So I go on here the other day, and there's this. I don't have the notifications, so every time there's a message, I don't get it. So I have to go on to the group to actually check it out. And they're all talking about, oh, can we fill the pothole ourselves? Apparently, you can't. If you fill in the pothole yourself, or you get the neighborhood together and everybody makes some concrete or tar or whatever, apparently if something happens and someone's car gets damaged, then you're liable because you filled that pothole and you fixed it. Yeah. Wow. Now, yeah. Absolutely. There's there's a guy, um, I think, in the Cape, this 85-year-old man, you know, talking about facts. I don't have the story in front of me, but I, I read it this weekend, mm -hmm. who um, fixed some kind of uh, water leakage or, or um, hole that was in the ground and was leaking yeah. water outside his property. And uh, it's caused a whole lot of problems. But he's now sitting with a 185,000 rand bill from oh, <laughs> the oh, city. <laughs> so, we, yeah, we, you we, just don't want to mess with that. Yeah, we, we, I stay when you, we, our potholes, you actually, everybody that lives here actually knows how to swerve around them. Um, yeah, exactly. And That's the, what we're doing. The fine problem is quite interesting because you have these. The street vagrants who are normally at the traffic lights were actually filling them with sand and things for people because you know what amazes me you, if you travel the world you will see these roads that were laid five six hundred years ago and there's no damage 
but the potholes are repeating over and over and over. It damages the cars. People have accidents. Yeah. And they are Absolutely. not potholes. They are pools. Some of them are swimming pools. I'm sure if we look inside, we'll find frogs and, mm -hmm. I don't know, other things inside <laughs> there. You know, you're exactly right. I mean, like, there probably are whole ecosystems developing in these potholes. But it just drives me crazy that we're not crazy allowed to take matters into our own hands and fix the thing ourselves. Because everybody yeah. in the neighborhood, we're all like, well, I'll donate, you know, a bag of cement. And the other guy's like, well, I'll go and get some stones and we'll all mix it and th throw the concrete in together and then set and let it, you know, all figure out all the way. Apparently, we can't do it. So what drives me crazy is that you now have to wait for the municipality. So apparently, they've the one guy is so on the ball, though. One of my neighbors, he's like, he knows exactly when they're scheduling to come to this zone to come and do all the potholes. And I mean, they have filled them in before, which which pleases me. I don't know if you've been on that road outside Cliff Central lately, Leanne. You haven't been there for ages. But we used to have some pretty awful potholes. Mm -hmm. and they've, they've been going around fixing those. So I suppose you just have to wait. But I also well, think it's also speaking oh, it's of science, it's a it's a very very specific um, you know, method that's supposed to be used to fill them. At one stage, I remember there were I read a story about pulling um, road engineers out of retirement <laughs> because there seemed no. to have been a gap in um, passing down information to newer workers on the, the best ways of filling these potholes um, so that they mm. lasted. And, mm. uh, yeah, you would I, often I would drive around and see some man literally on a walking stick giving instructions to everyone. <laughs> on a walk, <laughs> they were a filling walking the bottle. stick? Yeah. Some old road um, engine. Yeah. So I, I think there was this kind of – there was a while where there was this gap of information. Um, but let's hope they're getting there. Well, here's a good idea from Congo Chris. Chris says – uh, there's a graffiti artist overseas who used to spray paint giant penises on potholes, and then the local municipality would have to repair them because it would be like public indecency. <laughs> I don't know if that would work oh, in South okay. Africa, though. That's hilarious. But maybe we should just do that. Is, is spray paint a huge penis on the thing? I, <laughs> I think it's that. a great idea. <laughs> but what gets me is when you have like 10 different potholes, and they fill no. the potholes instead of relaying the road, and the same potholes oh. repeat over know, and over and over again. And who pays for it? The taxpayers. Yeah, I also don't believe, Leanne, <clears throat> that it's hard to do these things. I mean, if you've ever met people from the municipality, they're not like the smartest people in the world. So I, I'll believe it when I see it. Let them come and fix them, though, because honestly, some of these things are starting to look like, especially with all the rain we've had, um, you know, Gauteng has had more rain this December and January than I think we've ever had for a December and January in my living memory. And if you actually have access to like records of all of this. I know that we've got very smart listeners who know everything and who will find out whether this is true or not. Um, but I, I don't think, and I don't want to talk about the weather because it's boring, but I don't think we've ever had such a wet summer in, in Gauteng. It's been crazy. Every weekend, it's rained. If you were planning to do something fun and summery over the weekend, forget about it. You maybe had one weekend, one whole the last three months. Where you could it's actually been the most depressing, depressing summer for cats ever. Yeah, and now you, you know, we're gonna go. We're gonna go into autumn soon, and we're gonna be sitting here going, "Where was the summer we were promised?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at a couple of headlines quickly. Um, if if you've just joined us now, Leanne Mole is here, and Sunil Osman is here. Is here, and we're busy, um, you know, starting your day off with you, getting you going, hopefully, um, talking about some of the things you're interested in. Can you believe again to talk about weather just briefly because it was such a big story? All the wind in the UK. My God. Have you heard what happened there? Oh, yeah. So there's a storm called Eunice that um, went through. Now, uh, isn't, that, isn't that one of the royals? Isn't there a Princess Eunice? Uh, no, there's, there's Beatrice and Eugenie. Uh, oh, so Andrew, Andrew <laughs> I was thinking Andrew. of the Afrikaans version where you combine the names. <laughs> and, and, and Eugenie and Beatrice, shame, they've got their own storm with their father and the whole Epstein saga, which seems to have been. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the biggest royal story of the Another year. Another suicide look, this weekend. Oh, I heard about that. We'll talk about that in a second. But look at the roof of the O2 Arena. That was this weekend because of the, the storm. Eunice. Oh, wow. Crazy. Crazy, right? That's insane. So that's been happening in the UK. And I, I heard from people who were like literal. Uh, they, were, they were holding on. They were holding on to like street poles and blowing 
like a flag horizontally mm-hmm. because bro- going so hard. So if you were in the UK and you're listening to us this morning, please tell us what, what it was like to experience that. It sounds like it was bloody awful. Sections of the fabric roof of London's O2 Arena have been shredded by the storm. Uh, Eunice, causing the venue to close, opened in 2000 and formerly known as the Millennium Dome. The landmark in Greenwich, southeast London, has been damaged by gusts of up to 80 miles an hour. The building was evacuated and many other buildings have been damaged by wind. And uh, apparently people all over England are reporting damage. Huge amounts of uh, insurance claims will be, uh, will be thrown around, ob- obviously, after this. But if you were in the UK and you have some stories for us, apparently the sea was out of control. There were you know, huge waves smashing against the coast, particularly in the south of England. So if Cornwall, you know anything about yeah. Cornwall, yeah, if you were involved or you have pictures or you have anything you want to share with us, please let us know. We'd love to hear about that because uh, it sounds like it was absolutely wild. And you know what the English are like, right? Huge storm. People like blowing into buildings and cars being pushed around by this wind. And English people standing outside going, hmm, a bit windy today. Yeah, well, that's how some people were being injured. They were standing watching the sea. No. And before they knew it, they were, you know, pushed up against buildings. <laughs> and let, let, me, let me just throw this in there for the hell of it. Um, full moon affecting weather patterns, gravitational oh. pulls. Okay, yeah. Well. Yeah, sure. No, no reason, no reason not to throw that in since we've already upset everyone with our talk of <laughs> the full moon earlier. So apparently, in East London, not not east east of London in, in England, but here in in uh, slummies, in slummies, yeah. So apparently, there was uh, there were more than thirty British Airways passengers who were stranded after their flight turned around in midair, and this this would freak you out, Leanne. You don't like flying oh, yeah. anywhere. It's understood the flight returned to the airport after the plane's landing gear allegedly malfunctioned. The plane was bound for Johannesburg. One of the passengers on board the plane, Mandla Mkabeha, said that um, the aircraft rerouted after an issue with its landing gear forced passengers and crew to disembark. When we landed, they told us to stay on, that they wanted to check what the problem was. Then they found out that the problem couldn't be fixed and we needed to get out of the plane. How come they didn't inspect the plane before it departed? Yeah, exactly. You would think that they'd be checking these things. Anyway, then 30 minutes later, they told us the flight was canceled. They didn't tell us to book after flights. They just told us there was no flight. Then people complained. And that is when a certain number of people were squeezed into other flights. I mean, that's just, that's really not good. Yeah, that's pretty scary. It's It's always, uh, the hard part is is always getting back onto onto it. A plane, if you know, there they change the plane, but often they fix the plane and then you get back onto the same one. <laughs> That's got to be really <laughs> uncomfortable. Not so into know, that. I don't know if I'd want to get back on the same plane after they told me there was something wrong. It with happens it. often. Yeah, bring us a new one. If, well, if let's, that's, not, let's not if traumatize that's you. Let's not give you, make, make you feel insecure about anything. I mean, yes, Terrible, broken right? plane, but it's fine now. <laughs> so I don't know if this, uh, if this is even a story, but. Apparently, the queen was diagnosed with COVID over the weekend, but mm-hmm. it's probably uh, Omicron, and we know that that doesn't really make any difference. So uh, She's still you know. carrying out some of her duties. So Yeah, so how bad could she, it be? She's can the we, queen, you can know? We just, please, can we just let this thing go now? I think it's over. It's done with. There isn't much more. I know there are lots of people who don't want it to be finished because mm. they love it. They're into it. They like the idea that they're, they're, they're suffering and that they're going through something. Uh, traumatic, but it's over now. It's time for us to actually get back to our lives. And uh, if the queen can carry on at 90, what is it, 95 years old or something, doing her duties and she's got COVID, then what the hell's your excuse? Get on with it. If there's anything to that story, let it be that lesson. Um, Ace Makashule insists that his corruption case is politically motivated and said he's ready for court. Um, I really hope that they they, they, they go into this guy and, and, and they go hard at him because he is expected to appear at the Free State High Court in Bloemfontein for a pre-trial hearing on Monday. He's appearing in the, the corruption case involving the 255 million rand asbestos tender that was issued while he was Premier of the Free State. And he's charged, along with others, including businessman Edward Sodi. Um, the, the case has dragged on for months since his initial appearance in court in 2020. So if it's dragged on for months, that's probably because he's been dragging it on for months. So you want your day in court? Get on with it, dude. No, wait for well, he's busy day. sorting out the asbestos in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, sure. Which, of course, is really great that they were, they, I mean, they were trying to remove asbestos from people's roofs, apparently. 
but they ended up just moving the asbestos around. And you know how dangerous that stuff is. And someone made a ton of money out of it. And one of the people who made a, a, a whole lot of money out of it seems to be Ace Mahashule himself. And then finally, uh, Viola Davis is going to be cast as Michelle Obama in the First Lady's first trailer. Now, apparently, uh, First Lady is the name of the film. It will air later this year. We'll explore the lives of the women married to three U.S. presidents. So it's also going to star Michelle Pfeiffer as Betty Ford and Gillian mm -hmm. Anderson as Eleanor Roosevelt. So they're only focusing on Betty Ford and Eleanor Roosevelt and Michelle Obama. And it's described as a revelatory reframing of American leadership told through the lens of the women at the heart of the White House. So I don't know if anyone's into that, but there we go. Mm, Apparently, absolutely. Viola. Wow. Viola I think that if, if there's any sort of narration in the beginning of the film, a, a very good voice to use would be Monica Lewinsky. I mean, that would probably... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very good idea. Nice. Such a credible, you know, um, stand-up person in, in society. Yes, there's Some great lips, lip service, great lip service, yeah. Yes, I think she's very good at that. And you guys are still giving her a hard time. Can a woman not have sucked dick back in the, in the 90s and get on with her life? Really? How long must we punish oh, her? Oh, dear. Oh, right. yeah, we're, we're giving her a hard time because she gave everybody else a hard time. Oh, too. stop it. <laughs> this, is getting, this is getting ridiculous. Okay, let's turn our attention to Dr. Hanan Bushkin. It is going to be okay. That's what we say on a Monday. And we get to check in with him. He's, of course, the renowned psychologist, head of the anxiety and, tra anxiety and trauma clinic in Johannesburg. And we were talking about the Tinder swindler. Leanne, you were the first one to bring this up with me. And that's what everybody's talking about. All these romance scams. And um, apparently lots and lots of people in South Africa have been uh, caught out in these things. And, and many people internationally have lost lots and lots of money, too, because they're so desperate for love that they go yeah. online. Someone promises them they're the one. They, they sell them a story about how this is going to be the rescue that they've always looked for. And then next thing you know, they've been defrauded of millions of rands. And if you got away with anything less, consider yourself lucky. But here he is, Dr. Hanan. How are you? Hey, guys. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, nice so to see you. Sunil and Leanne and I were just talking about the Tinder swindler. And I think you've probably seen it. It's something everybody's been talking about in South Africa for the last week. Uh, maybe even the last two weeks. Why is it that otherwise quite smart people, because it's not, these are not just dumb, gullible people. Right? These, are, these are ordinary, sensible people like you and me. And we've, we've all got an opinion on this. But it seems to me that everybody and anybody is susceptible to this kind of ruse. That you can go on the internet, you're trying to find love. Why is love such a direct channel to fraud? For so many people and how come so many people suspend disbelief just because they want love in their lives right uh sure when i watched this um this documentary uh it was it was fascinating because i always enjoy watching the psychology and reading into the psychology of why people behave the way that they do and um i put up a post on on my instagram and uh I asked, what did you think about it? And mm -hmm. you won't believe how the vast majority of people were so venomous against these women. Yep. Uh, these women are so stupid. These women are so naive. These women right. are gold diggers. These women are so needy. Uh, South African women would never fall for this. And I've got yep. news for everybody. Yeah, these women were not naive and these women were not stupid. Right. And it's actually got nothing to do with these women because we would all fall for it. Um, and people go, well, how can we all fall for it? Well, the analogy is, you know, when you're watching a magic trick and you're yep. like in awe, wow, this must be magic. And then the magician shows you how it's done and you're like, how did I not see it? Of mm -hmm. course, we're all clever after the fact once yep. we know how the magic is done. But when we're watching the magic trick, it's like we think it's like coming out, out of another alien planet. So remember, these women are walking into these so-called dates and being, well, hoping that uh, the guy that they're meeting is a genuine guy. Nobody thinks that they're going to be dating a psychopath, somebody that's going to play a game with them. Mm. So anybody would fall for it. But your question is, why does it happen? Mm. It, and what do these swindlers, what do they target? Well, they target yeah. people that need something. They target people that need something. Because when you need something, Suddenly, you're open to negotiate 
um, giving perhaps more than you would have. So think about it this way. If you've just had a seven course meal, you're stuffed, you can't think of food. And I now come with uh, the commodity of food and I want to give you and I want to trade that. Well, you can be very logical about it because you don't need it. But imagine not having eaten for seven days and now I come with rotten food or food that you would never eat in a million years. Now suddenly you're prepared to negotiate because you're needy. Mm. And these women need attention, need love, need a sense of belonging. And these guys are dangling these so-called commodities at a great cost. Um, the production behind, uh, you know, fulfilling those needs was incredible. But again, these guys go to incredible lengths. I'll share one quick story with you. One of my patients, and this is, and, and this blew my mind when she told me the story. She meets this guy, and that he lives overseas, um, and she is very wary of of him. And she asks all the right questions, and then she says, "I want to meet you. I want to see you on Facetime." Right. So they, uh, because she wants to see that it's a real person. Correct. Anyway, she's um, she's uh, sets up a, a Facetime date with this guy, and they're having the most amazing conversation. I'll fast forward three months later, she loses something in the region of 100,000 rand to him. He, became, he, he, was, he was later found to be a swindler. And when I asked her, well, what happened in the conversation? And she said, Hanan, you won't believe this. It was a recording of someone else. My it was a recording of someone else. No. This guy on the what? other line was having a one-way conversation. He had his dog on the couch. He was talking to her. Hey, how are you doing? And, he, and later on, when she replayed that, she realized that he wasn't answering her questions. He was just talking and like, mm-hmm, yeah, you know, by the way, I'm going to show you what I'm doing in the kitchen. I'm going to show you this is my dog. And oh, by the way, I've got to go. And the conversation lasted for about seven minutes, but he was having a one-way conversation. No. She, she thought she was talking wow. to him. And that's how, that's how he baited her into, into, well, he was a real person with real intentions. And uh, that's how you got the money. So these guys are very, very uh, suave and very, um, very sophisticated in the way they do things. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, so I know somebody who also was, and, and she, I tried to talk her into coming on here and she, she said, look, she's still embarrassed about it when she thinks about it now. But she also had this dude overseas who was desperately in love with her. They'd met on like Facebook or whatever. And she is probably in her 40s hasn't been married, desperate for love. Uh, all her friends are getting married or have been married or have children already. She feels like she's been left behind. This guy came along, a little bit older than her, promised her the world, told her how he was he's going to be her everything. And, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. And it's so great to be, to be in your life and to have you in my life and all of that stuff. Just charming and lovely. And she was absolutely captivated by him. And by no means a stupid person, right? And this guy also went to such lengths like, oh, listen, I'm, I'll be coming to South Africa soon to visit you. I would love to, uh, you know, I'll stay at a hotel, but I'd love us to spend as much time together as possible. Uh, just I need to sort out the visa. So I'm going to get that done in the next couple of weeks, but I'll keep you up to date. And, you know, always checking in with her and sending her messages on WhatsApp eventually, because you know how people share information. So next thing it's WhatsApp, then it's here, you can follow me here and here. These are all my social media handles. Anyway, I mean, she figured out somewhere down the line after she'd helped pay for the visa, supposed visa, and after she'd helped put money towards a plane ticket and a whole lot of stuff, that this guy had no intention of coming here. He didn't look anything like the pictures that she'd seen of him. He was always too busy to do FaceTime or to get onto a live conversation with her. There was always some excuse, and she bought it for a long, long time. I mean, you'd think by that stage the alarm bells were going, but her need to be loved, which you referred to earlier, Dr. Hanan, her mm. need to be loved was we, so big that she yeah. was willing to give all the other stuff. We, we call them pain points in marketing. As soon as you've identified a certain person's pain points, then you're A for away. Absolutely, because then what happens, uh, Leanne, is that you get them emotional. They're no longer logical. They're emotional. Yeah. And in marketing, you want to get somebody very emotive. If we were all logical, we just buy our bare necessities. We wouldn't need this extravagance on pretty much on anything. But the moment you become emotional and you have that need to belong and a need for love and a need to 
be a part of something, suddenly you're prepared to pay way more than you would have if you didn't have that need. So, and by the way, Gareth, you raised a really great point in terms of your friend being too embarrassed to come on the show. The reason why we don't hear about it, I want to tell you, probably 95% of the patients that I've dealt with that have been swindled, their friends don't know because no. nobody been knows there. because they're exactly, because they feel stupid. How can I have been manhandled by this by this person? Yeah. How can I have been so stupid mm. to have given away so much money that I don't have? Um, I should have been way more way more aware or way more alert or way yeah. more on and, guard. So they're and very oftentimes, embarrassed. And oftentimes it's your friends who are warning you about it. You know, they are outside the situation and they're saying, you know, just be careful. This person might not be real. They turn out not to be real and you may want well, to hide that fact and rather well, say, this, you know, this, they just disappeared. So this is exactly what happened with this friend of mine is everybody in her life was saying to her, this is nonsense. And I mean, at mm. least she had told you know, her family and friends, everyone was saying to her, this is nonsense. You shouldn't be falling for this. It's obviously a scam and a ruse. And she was just like, no, no, no. He, he is, he's real. He's, he's the guy. He loves me. And it's, it's like a real thing. What you said just yeah. now, Dr. Hanan, about the emotions taking over where logic should, that, that happens all over the place. But, but it seems that when you are, oh man, when you want love that badly, when you feel so alone, there's just about nothing that you will do, that you won't do rather, to, to keep that fantasy going in your head, right? That's for any need. That's for any need. If I am in need of something, I will give away way more than I'm prepared to when I'm logical about it. So, and a need for love and a need for affirmation, a need for belonging and be part of something and have a companion is a real need. There's no question. I mean, Leanne, you would know with marketers, I mean, they they touch on those pain points all the time. You're lonely. This is how we can get you to belong. You're lonely. This is how we can have you have a partner. You're lonely. This is how we can have you get liked and liked and liked by others. Um, and people are prepared to pay, pay not just money, pay with time and energy and coins to fulfill that love. But I also want to remind people their levels to this stuff. You know, mm. you, if you if you get a message on Facebook from a from somebody going hey, you look so beautiful. That's level one creep. That's, mm. I mean, that is, that probably most people would pick up as uh, somebody trying to catfish you. But these yeah. professionals on level 10, they don't do that kind of stuff. They don't go, they don't interact with you with like kind of red flags to begin with. They just reel you in real slowly. They don't like, they don't give you those signs at first actually they, they never give you their signs. The long game right they play the long game uh, they play so the long we, game here's someone who we could probably help sunil and and dr hanan just see if you can help us here um please can you help us move a nigerian prince's gold out of lagos i'm his only help says <laughs> 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 that's that's level one that's level one that's level one yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would no. you say that emo that that I mean desperation leads leads to emotional manipulation, um, because people have forgotten how to actually just be okay on their own, so they're looking for yeah. something else all the time. Of course, of course. And when I'm desperate again, I'm prepared to give away way more than I'm prepared to when I'm not desperate. Emotions are a real powerful thing. Emotions are a real powerful thing because we know this for a fact with. Uh, with brain scans, the moment emotions are triggered, it literally shuts off the prefrontal cortex. That's the part of the brain, the front of the brain, that is the logic, that is the reason. That's the one plus one equals two. And when we're emotional, uh, try ask somebody to one plus one anything, they don't know the answer. Mm. Listen to this. That's when we start avoiding the red flags, right? Right, right. absolutely. You, you don't avoid them, you just, you, you ignore them. You know they're there. You, you, you're, you're your rational brain is just overridden, as Dr. Hanan says. So Cassandra says, um, you guys need to watch Becoming Anna on YouTube. Uh, I think it's on Netflix, though, not on YouTube. This 25-year-old girl scammed New York, New York bankers out of $40 million. It's a true story, apparently. Yeah, I've, I've seen the trailer for that, and it looks bloody amazing. So yeah. I'll be watching that this week. Becoming Anna. Apparently, it's a huge hit in America because it actually happened. This girl came in. She pretended to be like, you know, a Russian girl from, you know, a good family. And she had all these ideas about creating this club and people invested money. And she just, these are the smartest people in the world, like New York bankers got completely swindled by this girl. 
just absolutely amazing. So, Dr. Hanan, what are the what are the things to look out for if you if you are susceptible? Because I'm talking about the things in you that you need to look out for. You you might be scammed by someone who's sophisticated, that level ten person that you were talking about. But what should you be aware of with yourself so that yeah. you don't get taken advantage of? So I'll mention three things very, very quickly. First of all, never be desperate for anything. Work on your, on your needs because when you're not desperate for anything, then you can be logical. So never, be, never walk into any negotiation with any person being desperate because mm -hmm. that makes you weak. So you can want and that's perfect, but never be desperate. And that's number one. Number two, ask yourself, what am I in this negotiation for? Uh, because just uh, there's a big difference between I'm in going on a date because I want a one-night stand versus I'm going on a date because I want somebody as a companion for the rest of my life. And the reason, and people go, what's a difference? Because the interview questions are going to be different. If you're hiring somebody to run in your business for a day versus you're running, you're looking for somebody to run your business 50-50, the interview questions and the interview process is going to be very, very different. So if I'm looking for a one-night stand, I'm going to ask very different questions. I'm going to look for different criteria versus if I want somebody for the long haul. So ask yourself, what do I want? And then the third thing that I'll mention is relationships, the healthy one makes sense. If something doesn't make sense, you ask until one or two things happen. One, it makes sense, or two, it falls apart. But always ask. Relationship, a dance between two people that are in this with goodwill should always make sense. If you ask him or her, hey, can we meet your family? And he gives you a whole story, well, it doesn't make sense. If you ask him, hey, can I come and visit you with X, Y, and Z, or at X, Y, and Z, and he gives you an excuse, well, it doesn't make sense. Never allow anything in a relationship to not make sense. I love it. It's good advice. Thanks, Dr. Hanan. Always good to check Thanks, in with guys. you. Of course, if you have a particular problem you want us to help resolve for you, you want to join us on the show for some free therapy, then just send us an email, contact at cliffcentral.com. Dr. Hanan is making himself available to us, and we can actually direct his very expert advice at you. And more than that, we can help other people too, because by hearing from your story, from your example, um, we'll be able to help other people to avoid these pitfalls that uh, obviously, you know, it doesn't matter how clever or, or stupid you think you are. Uh, there is always a set of circumstances that, someone will fall for and it's just a question of your, just a question of how much you can control your emotions or whether or not you're lucky enough or your timing is good or bad but thanks dr Hanan. good to see you thanks, just two things nice before we go before yes, we go yes. quickly yes, 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 um quick. it's inventing anna apparently oh, not sorry, becoming great. anna Thank and you. secondly uh babe williams says please can the doctor change his background my ocd keeps me counting all the books um <laughs> Instead of concentrating on what he's that. saying. That's great. All right. I love yeah. that. Oh, I love nice. that. All right. All right. Very, very good. Bev, All right, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, Dr. Hanai. Okay, cheers. Cheers. Okay. Okay. All right. Sunil and Leanne and I are here to look after you for the rest of this morning. We've got another hour of good stuff heading your way, including Collectomania today, which is going to be very exciting. So stick around for that. It is just after 7 o'clock, cliffcentral.com. And it is Monday morning. Let's go. Let's start the day. Let's get cracking. Yo, I put it like, wow, this that sound. These oaks don't work hard like me. I hope they know by now.
suffer from collectivism. I started collecting when I was about eight years old. Do you have an obsession with objects? I sort of got into collecting TV cars. Are you a fanatic, a devotee? Are you someone exhibiting enthusiasm or strong passion? When lockdown hit, when everyone was kind of bored at home, they started Googling, like, what are these things worth these days? Cliff Central dispenses a weekly dose of collector mania. Join me as I talk to compulsive collectors. Fascinating. The frame's total value is probably about 12,000 rand. Possibly a little weird. I developed this infatuation with the Statue of Liberty. Collector mania, Mondays on The Gareth Cliff Show. Brought to you by SA Gold Coin Exchange and The Scoin Shop. Yeah, ball. Cliffcentral.com with uh, Gareth Tiff, me, uh, Sunil Osman, who's with us this morning, and Leanne Moll. And we are live on a Monday to get your day going. It's the 21st of February already. The year is running away with you, so you've got to be on top of things. You know, Sunil, I was just thinking about all those uh, people who've been scammed online. And, mm. I mean, it's happened to all of us. I, I had someone scam me out of buying a puppy um, two years ago now. And um, I'm, I've got a private investigator after this guy, which is hilarious because <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing how no, it's hilarious because you figure out what these people's modus operandi is, and you think, "Oh, I was so stupid. How could I have fallen for that crap?" Yeah. Um, but, but at the time, you don't think anything of it. You just assume people are going to be good people. Exactly. You know, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are lots of people here who are saying, for example, Steve says those Facebook sale adverts where you buy a laser engraver and you get two little plastic hooks. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? Yeah. I, I was scammed out of a what once. So oh, yeah? when I moved to Johannesburg, I, I, I was desperate for money. I needed to get money when I moved up here about five oh. years ago last week, actually. And I had bought myself a Tussauds watch, which was about 35,000 Rand. And I put it online for 15,000 Rand. I hand delivered this watch to the person after I got the proof of payment and no money came through. Took the number to the cops, what? took all the details of the cops. The cops knew exactly where the person was, and they did nothing. Yeah, you know, that drives me up the wall. I mean, it, it could happen to anybody. That's why I said earlier, you, you, everybody thinks, oh, no, no, I'm too clever. I'll never get caught by these scammers. I've often thought that. Um, and then it happens to you. Hmm. And I hope when it does happen to you, it's just not a lot of money. That's all. So so you, you lost the watch, and, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing. Obviously, you, you can't nothing do a damn thing. Is this person going? So, what is the point? This is what I always want to know. What is the point of us fee carrying and recurring everything that we do if you can't trace someone by a cell phone number, if they've done something criminal? What is the point of fee care if the banks can't go after someone's money, if, especially if they stole the money from you, right? Yeah. They want to complicate things for no reason. Right. So we're filling in all these forms and we constantly have to give people proof of our residential address. And I mean, I, I'm sure you, you and Leanne have both filled in forms. Everybody who's listening to us, too. Anytime you get a cell phone, for heaven's sake, you have to fill these things in. So what is the point of doing any of that if these criminals can clearly just use false information or just not even bother? Exactly. I mean, and, and use, my, use my watch example again. I have the contact number for the person who mm -hmm. actually scammed me to the point where they would i would phone them and say look where's the money and they would answer the phone the cops would phone them and they would be able to actually speak to the people who took the watch and didn't pay the money but there was yeah. no follow-up no no follow-up that's no, ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous listen sometimes you, you you must be very careful what you buy online as well I mean, you know, a lot of these sites, they've, they've, it's just not what the picture, <laughs> it's not what it shows. In <laughs> well, you know, all those jokes about Wish, like, um, yes. you know, Wish is that website where you get those really cheap versions of something, like you get some yeah. girl, who, she sees a picture of this beautiful dress and she goes, oh, that, that's amazing. And it's only, I don't know. $20 or $30 and she's like, oh, well, that's not so much. Do the calculation, convert to rands. You're like, ah, I think I'll buy it. What the hell? And you go on and buy it and then something arrives, which is just completely <laughs> different. It's, it's, it's what I ordered on Wish versus what I got. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Anyway, um, <laughs> Carl says, there's this woman at the strip mall near my house who wears a very short skirt. She's stunning. She scammed me like nine times, the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Tracy, who, who is a photographer, says the number of times uh, people have tried scamming me when I sell old cameras on Facebook. 
on the marketplace. The sale usually falls through when I want to meet them at the nearest police station to complete the transaction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's not a bad way of doing it. But, you know, what a pain to have to go to the police station every time you want to do a transaction. It's ridiculous. Listen to this. It's sad that we yeah. can't trust one another like this anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I'm, I'm selling stuff on, on Marketplace at the moment. And I actually mentioned before that, you know, it, it was a, um, a a big double fridge, so I couldn't exactly meet at the police station. <laughs> but um, I had to have someone here at home you, with me because you there were the, two you strange to people coming to my house. I'm just trying to picture you traveling to the police station, strapping a, like, <laughs> double fridge onto the roof of your car <laughs> like outside the police station with some dude from the Congo. <laughs> <laughs> I will buy this fridge from you. <laughs> you will sell it to me. How much do you want for the fridge? It'll be fantastic. Yes, you got guess. Yes, yeah. you got guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, but you, you, you've got to be super careful. I mean, who knows, right? Could, it could happen to anybody. I tried to buy drugs and home with a mutton bone. I'm not sure. I think you're still. I think you're still high, Vyas. And still on the drugs. Yeah. Some um, good drugs there. <laughs> no, very. Those are good drugs because a, a mutton bone. <laughs> very nice. Um, I know someone says, "Dude, 69. He was scammed out of four thousand five hundred dollars buying a car on Marketplace. Everything looked legit. The dude was so good. There was a fraud in an eBay website. Um, the the user said, "Don't buy." Uh, the car, nobody listens to... Oh, you, you, sorry. Uh, Dude69 said, don't buy the car. Nobody listens to him. Though. Sorry. Um, Sometimes people have to learn their lesson, right? Yeah. Hey, I hope when you when it does happen to you and it will happen to you at some point that it's only a little bit of money and that you don't get hurt too badly. You don't get burned too badly. So that's uh, what we wanted to talk to Dr. Hanan about. And it's still, um, it's still going on because people are watching Tinder Swindler going, oh, that's amazing. Wow, what a story. It's easy when it's someone else's story, right? Mm -hmm. Problem is when it's you. Oh, a lot of people still traumatized. Uh, I see in the comments from Leanne killing a spider live on the show on Friday morning. She viciously <laughs> smashed a spider to death and the, the juices went all over her wall and it was a real mess and people were traumatized. A lot of people are worried about being party to an execution effectively on the mm -hmm. show live on Friday morning. So Leanne, Very you have much there's much to yeah, answer for you. Yeah, Sunil, talk about like the, the spiritual side of what she's done by killing this animal. And supposedly, Leanne is an uh, animal rights activist. I mean, it really is a terrible, terrible blot on her copybook, if you'll pardon the pun. Well, I think Spiders we have to, animals. <laughs> we have to speak to Dr. Anand again, because I know that he deals with helping people with phobias and stuff. So right. now, you, you know, arachnophobia is a thing. Oh, yeah. Personally, I'm a catch and release person, unless it's really annoying me so leanne i feel for you um and i hope that you said i'm i before i kill a spider i had scorpions in my place the other day and before i killed a scorpion i was like i'm sorry dude but no bye felicia yeah. um so <laughs> I, I feel you I, I think that you need to just acknowledge the fact that you've taken a soul away it could have been abundance yeah. coming to you yes leanne could have been yeah a Murderer. abundance of his friends mm. exactly Murderer. or her friends yeah. there might be a nest Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not I'm not frightened of spiders, so I don't mind when I find spiders in my house, even if they're big, scary-looking ones, because I know that they eat all the insects I really don't like, like mosquitoes and things like that. If if, if anything lives in my house that kills mosquitoes, I'm its friend. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely. I believe and, it. I believe and it. You know, and support I'm not scared of those spiders scorpions. and scorpions and and all those things. It's when they make those sudden movements. I had a rat yeah. running towards me the other day. <laughs> that's uh, that's scary I, I i had i had rats in my ceiling you get a bit of poison uh sunil you could sort that out easily i don't feel bad about that at all so don't try and pull your the guilt trip that you're pulling on poor leanne for killing that spider although i must admit it was very vicious and completely unexpected <laughs> um congo yeah, chris the anger out on the spider yeah <laughs> congo chris says ass cursed us all by brutally murdering murdering that spider Storm Eunice is a revenge curse against humanity. It's all her fault. Oh, I'll spiders take that. Are well done to Leanne. So proud of you, says Dude69. But listen, um, if you have scorpions in your house, Sunil, that's, that's pretty terrifying because those things can really... If, have you ever been stung by a scorpion? I've never been I stung by a scorpion. I told you I had one recently in my kitchen. 
But it didn't. The, it didn't sting the, you. Well, the cats had already sorted it out. Yeah, shit. Uh, me too, they learned from me. You do not. So want the last to be by scorpion. The last so. scorpion I found, I thought was a cockroach, and it was Oops. doing load shedding. It's a good thing there was a torch on my phone because oh I was going to just. Yeah, it was not pleasant. When the tail went up, I was like, "This is not a cockroach no more." <laughs> well, sometimes these things don't go well. Robert says it's the wasps. You rescue them from drowning, and in return, they sting you on the same hand that you used to rescue yeah. them. Jesus, wasps. That's another thing I don't like. Wasps flying around. Don't, that doesn't make me happy. Wasps, maybe, and scorpions, I think you have every right to eradicate. So if you can do that, good for you. Also, obviously, cockroaches. And Sunil, you're new to Johannesburg, right? Yeah, five years now. Five years, five years. Okay. Oh, well, prunes you, are not my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say to you, if you haven't encountered any of those yet, then you, you are really lucky. So just quickly, um, to remind you, on the latest episode of Leadership Books Unpacked, Manda Tsipularo and Ngobi Lengobo speak about the steps to a healthy organization. They unpack the notion that an organization is healthy when it is whole, consistent, and complete, and when its management, operations, and culture are unified. It's all part of what they do on Leadership Books Unpacked. The conversation is anchored on the book, The Advantage, Why Organizational Health Trumps Everything Else in Business, and it's by Patrick Lentione. And you can find out more by listening to Leadership Books Unpacked, brought to you by Super Lead, and you can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. So go and check that out. There is a brand new episode for you this week, Leadership Books Unpacked. Just look it up on cliffcentral.com if you can't find it anywhere else. Let us know what you think of that too. Coming up is an episode of Collectomania, which is going to be very exciting because today we're going to explore NFTs. So I don't know if you know anything about NFTs, but it is about bloody time that we start to understand this. I was talking to someone just over the weekend <clears throat> and he was going on about how NFTs are the next big thing. And if you aren't invested in them, you are missing out. And I got to be honest with you, I do not know the first thing about them. So I'm I'm not even going to venture an opinion before we have this discussion. And we'll be talking to someone who really is an expert in the field of NFTs. And we'll find out how you collect them, what they're worth, what they are all about, et cetera, et cetera. That's all coming up in a short while. Um, according to TP, cockroaches are actually very useful. They eat all the bad bacteria in your home. Hmm. Mm. 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 But aren't and they then shut it back you? out onto your food. Yeah. Aren't they filthier then, themselves? I mean, and then they and fly they just, towards you. Cockroaches don't fly, do they? You do get yeah, flying get ones. Flying cockroaches. Mm. But uh, My God. The, the more common ones are the, the non flying versions. Yeah. I've, I've got I, an I image of a man in a ones. kitchen running over and stomping on all these cockroaches dancing at the same time. Yeah. Just in I, my, I, just... Opened, I opened a dishcloth once that was in a drawer. And inside was the mom and about 100 babies. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Yeah. What, did you do? what did you do? Well, I pulled the whole drawer out and threw it outside. Um, and then I doomed it. You know, I used the doom. No, it's doom, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you've got to be careful because they, they lay eggs all over the place. And uh, the way you actually get rid of them is – having a fumigator come over and they put a special paste into tiny places like into the hinges of kitchen doors and things mm -hmm. the cockroaches eat that and then they die jesus well, yeah, that's I'm, quite I'm violent eh? i don't care <laughs> kill them kill 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 don't give me that tracy says you even get hissing cockroaches oh mm -hmm. my yes. god they hiss at yes. you yes yeah and they'll mm -hmm. stand up and hiss no man at the same time no. <laughs> what and on, they follow on the their, sound of your voice. <laughs> on, their, on their hind legs. They said on their the legs. Higher, up in, it's like tss. no, no man. The higher, so, higher pitched your scream, the more they follow you. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds terrifying. Stop, stop lying, you two. This is a scam. You're like the Tinder swindler. Between Sunil and Leanne, I'm, I'm having nightmares about goddamn cockroaches. Another That's reason not to stay, not be able to sleep at night. Yeah, you, you, you've you, listen. You try to get as few insects as possible uh, running around your house. It, it, it's meant to be for you, okay? <laughs> Humans. Humans should be the ones. Uh, Sharon says uh, Madagascan hissing cockroaches, and they're large as well. Yeah. Oh my God. TP says, come to Hearties. 
you'll be plagued by bugs. They've introduced a new species to eat the hyacinth, and it's crazy at night. Oh, my God. Why? But some mm -hmm. people keep cockroaches and hissing cockroaches as pets. You can mm -hmm. get them from the pet shop. No, man. Who would yeah. want that? Well, ask, can ask, ask anyone go. from Collectomania. There we no, go. Man. That's disgusting. I opened a restaurant, uh, a menu at a restaurant once, says Ulrich, and about 30 cockroaches crawled out. Oh. oh. Out of there. You cannot stay at a restaurant if that happens. Oh, my God. It's unbelievable. And you know, but it happens quite easily. I, I, I went to one of these wholesale fruit places, and you know they'll mm -hmm. grab a box and plunge your fruit into there. You take yeah. that home. <clears throat> and when I was throwing away the box, I noticed underneath there were cockroach eggs in the folds <clears throat> of the cardboard. <clears throat> so you, you bring them into your home without even realizing. And what about this, this, you know, like some people, okay, it's free protein, Leon, but what about the people who, who are using cockroach and insect milk nowadays? Have you heard about that? The milk <laughs> no, and insect and bird. No. Yes. You can't, you can't milk, milk a cockroach. Sis, man, no. <laughs> Dead talking, serious. How do you milk like a milk cockroach? Like almond. So they've got these insect burgers and cockroach burgers, and people are no. eating them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Chocolate coated cho cockroach sweets. What? Yes. It's a thing. A, a oh. lot of top end restaurants use insect dust on their food. Sis, I'll man. tell you about it, though. No. Yes. That's outrageous. You people are really upsetting me. This is not good for first thing in the morning. My stomach <laughs> is I haven't eaten anything yet. I mean, I'm, I'm heaving here. This is disgusting. <laughs> well, I'm sure a cockroach doesn't taste as good as a mapani worm. So we be good there. We good there. I don't eat those either. Just, you know, I know that insects, apparently the biomass of ants, all the ants on earth, the biomass is like 20 times the biomass of all the humans. And there are 7 billion of us. So you can imagine how many ants there are in the world. But mm. people are saying, oh, well, you know, you can... Yeah, there's, there's, there's protein, as you mentioned, uh, Sunil. There's protein in insects. I don't care. They can find a way of chocolate coating it, hiding it in a marshmallow. If I know there's an insect in there, and if I find a little cockroach leg with those little little spikes that they have on them, I'm done. I'm out of there. Sorry. Not a chance. Yeah, well, the, the, the thing is that there are insect burgers out there, but the chocolate-coated mm -hmm. ants is actually a thing as well. Genuinely. Look... I'm not going to be one of those people. If I find a, a, you know, a tiny little ant or something in my salad, I'm not going to throw the salad out. I'm going to, I might even eat the ant. I wouldn't even have an issue with it. <laughs> but I'm not going to seek out insects as my main source of protein. I think that there's something wrong with you if you're doing that. That is outrageous and probably very bad for you. Listen, the world might get to a point where we have to, where locusts yeah, are exactly. the, main, the main meal. Count, count yeah. me out. Apparently, if you, if you eat an ant, and I never, I never decided to sit down and have an, a, a nice ant meal, but no. when you eat the ant, there's an acid that you taste, yes. which is very similar to chili. And hmm. when I was younger, they used to tell me that that's the ant urinating in your mouth. Oh, my God. I'm not sure about the urine, but if you squash an ant and then smell your fingers, you can smell that acid. It's like battery acid. And, and I the think animal knows it kills everything. Yeah, no, she, she kills everything. Um, exactly right. And then, but then, if you if you were to choose something to eat, it might be flying ants because apparently those taste like peanut butter. My cats love them. Yeah, my my dog loves them too. Whenever there's a you know the, just before a storm or I don't know, it sometimes happens in, in summer. Yeah, they, batches, they all happen yeah. at the same time, and then there's like this huge <laughs> plague of flying ants, and the dog goes around just eating them up. Um, it's like a treat. It's like sweets to him. Yeah. And, and e eating weird things is actually a, f a, 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 a fantasy for many people. They want to see you eat these ants. They want to see you eat random things. And as I'm thinking now, actually, I, I've got a list of a whole lot of screenshots of things people want me to eat that I've been eating on videos for TikTok. And one of them is Mapani worms. And I must no. say, it was really, really good. No, you, you go for it, dude. That's all you. I'm not going to stop you but don't expect me to join you. Lucky says, I don't mind finding a full cockroach on my sandwich. The problem is when I only see the thigh. 
<laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Um, Sharon says ants have something called formic acid in them. That's, That's the one. Good. Yes, very good. Um, is nobody going to mention prawns? Yeah, I mean, listen, prawns are like the insects of the sea, right? So delicious. Very nice. Love it. So those ones, you, prawn curry. those ones you don't prawn have a problem curry. with. Prawn curry. All right, it is time for an episode of Collectomania. And this is, uh, for many of us, the most exciting part of the week. So Collectomania is brought to you, as always, by the South African Gold Coin Exchange and the Scoin Shop. And today we're going to talk about something called NFTs, non-fungible tokens. What does this mean? Why is everybody talking about it? How do you get involved if you want to get involved? I don't know any answers because I was talking to someone over the weekend about it and I suddenly realized I know nothing. So it's just as well that this morning we have two people on who are able to help us figure this out. The first is Ben Rubin. Ben began collecting NFTs in August 2021 on Ethereum, soon realized the transaction fees were unsustainable, so he moved over to Solana. His favorite thing about NFTs is how they allow the average Joe to get into projects on the ground level, whereas usually the early rounds of investment and project are only avail available to venture capitalists. It's a high risk, high return game, and the space moves at the speed of light. So you're not only investing money, but a lot of time as well. Hey, Ben, nice to have you on. How are you? Gareth, good to see you. I'm great. I'm great. How are you doing? Cool, man. I'm hoping that you and Konstantinos will be able to help us figure this out because he's our other guest, Konstantinos Karatama. Oh, my God. Karata Moglu. Oh, my God. I, I screwed that up so badly, didn't I, Konstantinos? <laughs> <laughs> morning, morning. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Kara, Karata Moglu. Karata Moglu, yeah. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. All right, so Konstantinos and Ben, I mean, you come from an entertainment and technology background, Konstantinos, so you're part creator and artist behind some of um, South Africa's radio hits, including uh, the crazy white boy uh, duo, which we all know very, very well, so it's nice mm -hmm. to see you uh, again on, on, on a completely different front, but you took a break from entertainment to get into the tech world, and you went into NFTs, so between you and Ben, we've got two really, really smart people here who are going to help us understand I'm going to start off with you, Ben. So give us the idiot's guide to what an NFT actually is. Sure. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, I think what's nice to know is that an NFT is essentially the same as a token. Um, so what I mean by that is that uh, your Bitcoin, your Ethereum, your Solana, um, you can transact with it. You can send it from wallet to wallet. And an NFT is no different. So you, you send it the same way. Um, there's no special wallet or anything like that. Um, it works the exact same way as, as a token. You can even fractionalize your NFT into a thousand pieces or 10,000 pieces, if you like, the same way you can do that, you know, with, with a Bitcoin. Uh, <clears throat> and essentially, I like to say that, that an NFT is uh, it's the best way to prove ownership. So an nft is a non-fungible token and and what that really means is you are allowed to to prove ownership over something and that can be a title deed for a house it can be a song it can be a piece of art um, it's really the the use case is unlimited it's amazing and it can also be used for for brands it can be used for sure <clears throat> you know people who've built up a a, a a catalog of music for example you can nft all of that stuff and then Absolutely. essentially you create a, a proof of ownership. So, I mean, this makes sense. But, um, Konstantinos, just tell us from, from your point of view, being someone who's also been in the entertainment business, you could probably explain in your own words to people like us who are not really in this tech world uh, how it all made sense to you. Because now that you're actually putting money into this stuff and you're actually dealing in it, trading in it, understanding it, playing with it every single day, you can help us to understand how it all actually works and, and try to put it in really, really dumbed down layman's terms for those of us who do not know the first thing about NFTs. Do you think Ben's uh, definition is, is acceptable? 100%. Yeah, it is acceptable, 100%. I mean, that's basically the premise. It's digital ownership. Um, but if you put it in layman's terms, basically why people are doing it, mm -hmm. um, is it's basically the new flex. You know, normally you would buy a Rolex, a sports oh. car, um, celebrities now would um, identify themselves by their board ape um, or their yeah. NFT that they purchase, put on Twitter. You know, Twitter has now um, integrated a 
like an NFT, um, an NFT option, we can actually link your, your wallet that you have your NFT in to your Twitter. And now that is your new Rolex, you know, right. it's basically your digital flex in the real world as well. Okay. So <clears throat> why are all these celebrities getting these, these bored apes? You can maybe help explain There's Bieber's one that he's yeah, got one, yeah. and, and these things you can buy um, and then it belongs to you, but I could just screenshot that and frame it in my own house and then say, well, who cares that Bieber owns it? I've got a copy of it on my wall. A right click saver, as we call it. Yeah, um, yeah. Look, look, I mean, you could, but that doesn't like anyone could do that really. But it's actually the, the digital contract that you've signed. That is you. You are the exclusive owner of this. And at the end of the day, it's like it's basically it can be braggy in a way, but you're telling people that you own it. And now that's with Twitter's integration and a whole bunch of other things to follow. When Justin Bieber has their approved uh, approved Twitter, approved Instagram with their with their NFT in they own this NFT and people know, like, I'm in business. I just paid, you know, a million dollars for this picture. Yeah, but then how's that different to anything that we're already doing in the real world, right? This is your whole point is that people are already doing this with cars or with watches or with whatever else. And we've discussed all kinds of collections on Collectomania before. Some people collect gold coins, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's no different here, except that you actually have the proof that you bought it in a way that is in any other form, I mean, like if you own a gold coin, you have to be able to show the contract. You have to have it in your safe possession, as well, hence, all that kind of thing. In this case, like this is Justin Bieber's. He owns it. You can copy it, but the original is his. It's like owning a, a, yeah. a photograph of the Mona Lisa as opposed to actually owning the Mona Lisa. Is that more or less right? 100%. But look, yeah, but this is the first phase um, okay. of it, you know, and basically like uh, Ben was saying, it's like it's, it's, it's an integration. So basically next is the next stop. So it's your digital ownership of your house, your deed, um, you right. know, uh, fr fractionalizing something, um, digital ownership. Um, it's the contract. It, it's it's, it's going to change the way everything works. Even maybe one day Netflix ownership, uh, Netflix memberships, everything will be broken down into an NFT. All right. So let's talk about the value of all these things, because that's what often when we talk about collections on Collectomania, we talk about the value of stuff and how value goes up or down. So what makes the NFTs valuable? Let's take, again, for, for the case of, of, of Justin Bieber's uh, Bored Ape, and there are lots of other examples that we'll get to in a second. What makes that valuable, and how does its value go up? Who wants to go for that? Ben, do you want to try? Sure, I'll give it a go. Um, so I like to look at NFTs uh, specifically. I mean, we're talking about Bored Apes and, and whatnot, so, so we'll stick with the sort of you can call it art right um and what i like to what i like to tell people is you get sort of two types of nfts so you'll get like your pure art nfts uh, and then you get your nfts that that offer some sort of utility um and what do i mean by that well you know there's there's a lot of examples but essentially because your nft is the smart uh, you know sort of token that has all this metadata and the capability to prove your ownership of something mm -hmm. it can be um it, it can have utility so let's say that uh you you own an nft um you have a board ape your club realistically there's no real utility to that other than perhaps the community that uh that owns the board ape your clubs um so that uh, as you can see there's a whole bunch of celebrities that, that own one of these things and there's chats that uh, only holders can get access to. So now you own right. a board ABR club, you get into a chat with all these guys, and they call it alpha. Um, and, and alpha means sort of like uh, the the best info at the moment uh, in, in the crypto space. So these guys usually have the inside scoop on a lot of things, uh, and, and you get access to that. So that, in a sense, is a, a utility. Um, and... It, it extends beyond that. So if you take, uh, I sent you, um, there was one called a Solstein. And that yeah. comes from a, a project called Your. And what they've done is they've created an escrow platform on the Solana network. Yeah. So that allows you to trade your NFTs peer to peer. Um, and, and they've verified all these collections. So you know it's safe. You can trade an NFT with me and I put it up on the site and you can see that my NFT is genuine and it is verified and 
therefore you have comfort in trading now, with me. I just, I just want to quickly go to some of the, the comments here from people. And, and I mean, I also feel this way about a lot of this stuff. Uh, you know, Mark saying, can you eat an NFT when you're hungry? And, you know, <laughs> some, some people saying, and, and he also says, what happens when nobody wants to flex about a picture? But the fact is that that goes for a Rolex watch as well. I mean, you can't eat a Rolex watch. You can swap mm -hmm. it for cash on the street. You could probably swap an NFT for cash on the street one of these days too. Some people would already be willing to accept Bitcoin or any other kind of payment for an NFT. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it's not really an argument, is it? No. And I mean, at the end of the day, your question was, what, what gives these things value, right? Yeah. And I suppose, like anything, it's speculative. The market gives it value. Mm -hmm. So it's already dependent on what people are willing to pay for it. So those board APR clubs are worth a lot of money because people have attributed that value to the board APR club NFTs. Um, right. what, what, is, what is this? Uh, what is Sandbox? Because Sandbox is this world that exists. Yeah, sandbox is a metaverse. Only, it's a metaverse, right? And yeah. you, can buy, you can buy property there. Now, sure. I said, when I heard about this the other day, we spoke about it on the show briefly. I was like, well, what, what for? What would be the point? What is, the, what is going on in the sandbox metaverse that makes it so, so valuable and so popular? And, I mean, Snoop Dogg just bought a, like a farm in the sandbox metaverse. Is this just bullshit? Is this like him going, yeah, 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 I'm on top of these things. Um, I'm going to sell, sell that weed farm of mine on the sandbox <laughs> for, for like a couple of million. Like, what's this all about? Yeah, I mean, I suppose at the end of the day, this could be just uh, the sandbox in particular. I personally think, you know, NFTs will be here forever. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe sandbox is a fad, one could say, and, and there's the next best metaverse comes out next month and all of a sudden Snoop Dogg and all his mates are buying property there. Um, but no, I mean, sandbox is, has obviously built up a, a really good brand. And uh, they're attracting all the biggest companies and all the biggest celebrities. And, and you know, similar to Broad ABR Club, if you've got this awesome metaverse and Atari's got a space there and Snoop's got a space there, then Nike wants a space there too. And so does Club yeah. Central potentially, you know? Yeah. Well, we, I mean, you could create all kinds of uh, an NFT, as you said earlier, <clears throat> Constantinos, you said yeah. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't need, you know, you don't need to be... Um, a, a person who's an, into art, for example, to yeah. want to buy an, an NFT. There's a friend of mine who's just bought a, one of these eagles. Um, there's, a, there's a project that's going on at the moment. He's bought this eagle. And uh, he said it's got, it hatches. Now, I know Leanne and, and Sunil are probably going to roll their eyes at this, as will many people listening. But he told me, no, no, it's going to hatch in like two months' time. And then he's got this valuable NFT, which is you know, like a really detailed beautiful picture and 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 it's 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 very high quality but yeah for for whatever it's worth he reckons he already has doubled his money um, before the things even come out good you could get a rare i mean look it depends like there are ways to do that um pre-reveal is the hype look there's a whole bunch of strategies of nfts you just hit the the basic bottom line here but mm -hmm. uh, what ben was saying about utility my main mm -hmm. focus is nfts with utility you're buying land in the metaverse like sandbox is the metaverse and basically you would basically take your avatar like all these avatars like his eagle could integrate into sandbox and that would become your virtual avatar so they're not just just pictures they would then be your the representation of you in the sandbox and in the <laughs> sandbox adidas has bought a piece of land let's say which they have um yeah. and they would maybe open a an adidas original store in there and you would walk around and then you would buy digital assets. Nike also just bought a company that makes digital sneakers. Uh, you know, so you would buy digital sneakers I can't. for your avatar. No, I know you can't, but that's where it's going. You know? I, and, I can't. No, I'm sorry. Well, Out of all of this conversation, is there an actual grain of sand anywhere or an actual eagle feather floating around? No, there is nothing. not. Nothing tangible. But what's really going to blow your mind is NFTs that come with utility have amazing passive income. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, I did send some shots through. Yeah, um, let's have a look. Also, everything we're talking about now, obviously, I don't want to, you know, it, it, it's not coming across as bragging or anything. A lot of us have been building this for a while. So, basically, one of the NFT purchases that I made yesterday mm -hmm. was a piece of virtual land that was probably the same price as a flat in Seapoint, you know. <laughs> um, uh, and NFT you can sell world. it, right, at some point down the line. Yes. 
Uh, for example, I bought it uh, yesterday. There we go, a piece of uh, yeah, NFT worlds. Um, each one of these NFT worlds is actually the same size as the entire sandbox. Um, wow. And then and then you can build, and I, in this NFT world, it comes with a sustainable currency that you get airdrop for holding the world. And different projects, avatar projects, will actually build their metaverse within this piece of land. And there are already 500 different projects building on uh, with NFT worlds at the moment. So each land is its own ecosystem. And just holding this land will give you a passive income right now of about 100, 200 US dollars a day. And that's an actual currency that's going to end up in your bank account. It will be in world tokens that I can then swap straight over to Binance, to Luna, wherever I want to go, swap it out my wallet. Look, it is a complicated process, mm -hmm. but, and it is high risk, but at the end of the day, I don't want a real job. <laughs> I want to live in the metaverse and, you know, sure. and, and I love it. So, and that's no, how, so yeah. if you had to sell it in, in three years time, yeah. could you use that? Could you convert that into cash to buy? Hundred percent. Use the analogy of food. Hundred percent. I mean, I bought it yesterday for um, the one I paid uh, fourteen Ethereum. Um, sounds like a lot of money. Fourteen Ethereum. It's three thousand. It's actually two thousand eight hundred dollars today. I think Ben, around right about there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and today it's worth fifteen Ethereum. So we up like let's say ten thousand US dollars, twenty four hours. So so. So you, just mentioned, again. you mentioned that it's not tangible. But where does all this money go and how do you cash it out? How do you eventually use it? Is it just in this? No. Okay. Basically, you would have a MetaMask wallet, which is yours, or um, there's loads of different wallets. You use crypto.com. But, but just take a look around what's actually happening. When you watch the Formula One, what do you see? Crypto.com, main sponsor. When you're watching UFC, what do you see? Crypto.com. Um, you know, all the big stadiums being bought by FTX. It's happening so fast, so quick. You, don't even, you won't even notice until you open your eyes. Mm -hmm. It's happening now, and all these wallets are going to help you integrate into the metaverse. Facebook, they've changed their name to Meta. What is that? The metaverse. Facebook has taken a step back from what they're doing and allowed things like TikTok to take over because they know that in five years' time, when their metaverse is ready, they're going to take over the market, will they hope. So, guys, I want to go through some more examples, but but let's just suspend disbelief for a second here, because, mm -hmm. you know, Sunil, when you talk about the the, the, the the Reiki or the healing you do, and a lot of people are like, ah, oh, this is bullshit. Sounds like nonsense. Now, in the same way, it seems to me that there are a lot more people buying into this metaverse idea and there are lots, lots more people who are buying NFTs every day. And of course, there are going to be good good, sensible people doing this, and there are going to be stupid, wacky people doing this. But, I, I mean, it's happening whether you like it or not. So I don't want us to spend too much time going, oh, this is nonsense, Oh, let's do, and trying to make uh, Costa and, and, and Ben explain over and over again why it's something that they believe in. Because either you believe in Bitcoin or you don't. And, you know, a couple of years ago, people were saying the same thing about Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. once upon a time back in history, people were saying, what, a bank? Why would you believe in a bank? Why would you put your money <laughs> in a bank? So Email, the down. internet. Correct. Yep. Let's, let's not go down the rabbit hole of like just shit talking the idea of NFTs. What I'd like us to get to is, is just this piece of land you bought now. So this is yours now, Costa. So what can you do with it? I mean, you say you've got a passive income from it, coming from it, but mm -hmm. what exactly are you doing with this every day? I mean, do you have a, do you have a, like a printout of this that you can look at? Can uh, you zoom in and like view the beach on the, on the bottom corner there? Can you decide where you're going to build your house? Do you rent property to other people? How does it actually work? Exactly. All the things you said you can do. Um, wow. And basically, the best thing about um, the NFT world is that it's actually integrated with Minecraft, right? Oh, now, wow. That has oh. millions, 150 million users, right? Mm -hmm. can, that is immediately integratable into it. It's already got its play base. So now, in other words, you can tell your kid, okay, you're not just going to play Minecraft. You're going to be making money from me every day. These kids mm -hmm. are going to be build, building, working. You know, right now, during the test phase of this program, a kid can make 10 US dollars a day playing in Minecraft. Sorry. So in, child labor. In, in NFT worlds. No, no, child labor. Yeah, but <laughs> not child labor, but, you know, like, why just play games when, when you can earn? It's play to earn. That's can they, can they lose you Can they lose you money, though, if they're really no, you stuffing can't lose about? Money. No, no, I mean, if they take your credit card, you know, and then sign up to, you know, um, and start buying NFT worlds with crypto, yes, then maybe. Okay. But um, no. Uh, you would join that server and then you would play. Uh, you would you would build your home, 
Um, you can lease out land to other users. You can lease out your piece of, uh, you can lease out your NFT mm -hmm. world. Um, you can fractionalize right. it. There's endless. Guys, what's what's going on here? What is what is this? This is a dirty bird. Oh, that's a dirty bird. Yeah, so that's Claude yeah. Van Stroke. Uh, coming back to utility, Claude Van Stroke owns Dirty Bird. It's a record label in San Francisco. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of big DJs, producers are doing it now. Holding this NFT, uh, not only is it a cool little NFT, gives you access. So access to music from the label and digital mm -hmm. ownership. It gives you access to um, to tickets to the shows, exclusive meetups with the DJs, blah, blah, blah. Endless utility, maybe a token one day. Um, and at the end of the day, that is another example of how record labels, DJs are starting to bring in more people and, so and, and give them value. We, we could, you were joking when you said this, or maybe you weren't, Ben, when you said this earlier, but we, we could have a, a Cliff Central uh, NFT and people could buy Absolutely. into that. You know, if we have our, our top, let's say we, we, we issue like 50 of these mm -hmm. um, and the 50 biggest fans get those first 50 and that they can prove that they were among the first 50 people to buy into this idea. We give them special That's access. Good. Maybe they get the, you know, they get some extra material that the other people don't. There's some added benefits like a club exactly. membership that you kind of participate in that that's something in the real world that you could use an nft for right exactly and i suppose you can do that in the real world with a piece of paper right but what's so mm. great about nfts is it's a smart little piece of paper so it just makes your life a hell of a lot easier you know now you can take this nft give it to your fans and they have this way to prove that they have that you know og status so now yeah. you have a discord channel that only they have access to um, mm -hmm. you know, there's programs that will verify that NFT for you. So mm -hmm. if people have fakes, they can't fake it. Um, they have to hold one of the actual 50 first ones. Right. So, I mean, it, 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 is, um, it is something, it, and it is maybe just a flex, but for many people that flex could lead to actual relationships, maybe even business down the line. You never know. It's, mm -hmm. it's the forming of a connection which you can prove universally and which no one can corrupt. Uh, look Absolutely. at this here quickly. What are these jet packs or jet packs? Uh, jet packs. Yeah, those are jet packs uh, from another company called Jadu, and mm. they are going to be virtual items within the metaverse. So sandbox. So uh, Snoop Dogg, uh, Lewis Hamilton, they've all done a collab with Jadu, and that would be virtual jet packs that you'll fly around mm. in within the sandbox, for example. Um, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> what, is, what is, um, what oh, is that? What is this? That's a rebel bot. Uh, that's uh, an, um, basically another NFT with utility um, that I've invested in. Um, and the company that I work for actually, um, I actually run a, I'm an NFT fund um, for Metaverse yeah. Capital based in the Metaverse. <laughs> and uh, we actually got you a gift, Gareth, as well. If you look there, I was talking about digital identities. Yeah. GarethCliff.eth is now yours. We'll send that to okay. you when you do have a wallet. And if anyone mm -hmm. ever wants to send you an NFT or wants to send you Ethereum cryptocurrency, they can send it straight to that. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to say at this point, send me everything. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> just, we'll look, we'll look. First, we have to set up your wallet, and we can discuss that afterwards. Okay, we can yeah. help you with that. But this is your digital identity. It's, it's in the post, Gareth. In the yeah, post. yeah, yeah, sure. I'll take everything. I'll take your land. I'll take your, your, your NFTs of your... You'll be surprised. Bring Snoop it on. Dog, um, you know, so many massive celebrities are making millions of dollars by getting airdrops. Because they say, oh, oh, but Gareth Cliff bought into this project. He's got one. Here we mm -hmm. go. And they just send it to you. It's amazing. I, I, yeah, I'm uh, blown away by this. All right. So let's look at the other stuff that you've got here. Um, you mentioned Rebel Bots. Now, what is this here? This is also another. And Ooh. some of this art is really that's, good. That's by the way. Mine. I mean, nice. Yeah. Is that yours, Ben? Yeah. So this is a cool one because uh, it started out as a pure art project. I bought, uh, I bought into it because I just thought they were really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. And they managed to build an incredible community of like diehard, these are called soul gods, um, mm -hmm. diehard soul gods fans. And I mean, you, could, you can go onto the Discord and the, the chat is pumping. What is a Discord? A day. Help, help us, baby steps here. What is a Discord? <laughs> Discord is like a, it's like a WhatsApp it's a, or Telegram. It's just a, a communications app. Um, okay. it's, it started out as like a, it was the gamer's sort of uh, communication app. So it's, it functions more or less the same as, uh, as any other app. It's just uh, obviously got some, some slight differences in infrastructure. So 
you have a server. So Gareth Cliff Show would have its own Discord server, and within that, you'd have different mm -hmm. channels. So you'd have a general chat, you'd maybe have a voice chat channel, mm -hmm. you'd have a channel where people can discuss today's headlines. Um, so that's essentially what Discord is. All right. Um, so apart from all the people who are obviously dead against this and think it's stupid, uh, and I'm going to discount them from the conversation for, for, for a moment because I, I really don't, uh, I don't want to turn this into are NFTs worthwhile or not. I want to turn this into, okay, so let's say uh, Leanne and Sunil and I are all three uh, hook, line and sink it here. We're all in on like getting into the NFT business, get into, getting into owning some of these NFTs and creating some ourselves. Is it very complicated to do this? I mean, do you have to be on 10 different discords every day, monitoring everything that's going on? How do you find out about these projects? How do you buy in? And how do you essentially get that passive income that none of us would be? You'd be stupid to say no to that. I, the dumb thing would be to say, oh, I'm not interested in this when you can earn $10 a day. I'm sorry. You put your kids to work on a computer and get them to earn you $10 a day. I think that sounds like a win. But how hard is it to get in? I mean... The truth is that, in my opinion, it does take a lot of time. Um, you have to have your ears to the ground. You know, you can't. There's so many projects coming out every day. Um, the market is just really, really saturated at the moment. So you, if you're going to come in as someone who doesn't really understand the space, I think there's a good chance that you'll get burnt. Um, mm. I think you need to hang around a bit. You need to join the discords. You need to listen to what people are saying. You need to see where the hype is. Um, yeah, I, I would say it, it takes a fairly significant time investment to do it properly. On the people who on Discord who would be trying to sabotage the whole thing and give false information and benefit themselves? Mm, no, so not it necessarily. It depends which community you're looking at, right? Um, and for the most part, I found people to be really helpful actually and uh quite the opposite of that um mm -hmm. but again i think it really depends on on which community you're going to go to costa do, do we have to do we have to be experts to get involved look uh to a certain degree you have to be because obviously security comes into play uh with discord mm -hmm. with telegram these sort of things there are people out there that are going to try and fish your wallet, uh, make you follow links to try and enter your wallets and stuff here. Yeah, so there is a degree of um, safety and you have to be pretty aware of what's going on all the time. Um, but that's why we have companies, you know, like Metavest that can kind of help you get exposure into uh, the space. I mean, I wouldn't advise like my dad to jump in and go buy NFTs, but I do. He does have, a, have an account where like I help him uh, where I manage things on his behalf, you know. Um, not financial advice, um, and your own research. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got to say, yeah. Um, but basically, yeah, so, so, so that's how it is. But uh, yeah, I, you, you just got to be cautious in the space. Like anything, there are scammers out there, you know, uh, coin shop buying fake coins, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, it is out there. The nice thing about an NFT is that once it's verified, you, it can't be a fake Rolex. That is the NFT. Boom, it's in the blockchain. You got a better chance, you know, of buying a verified project than buying a, you know, you have a better chance of buying a fake Rolex, to be honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. NFT is yeah. actually more secure. Well, um, listen, yeah. guys, I mean, this is still, we, we, I think we've only just scratched the surface of, of what it's like, but I think you've given us a good idea of what can be done in this, in this new NFT space. And I think it's great that there are people like you guys who are leading the way. And I hope you do make lots and lots of money out of this. And that by the time we next talk about this, we're not going oh is it worth it or is it not and we're rather going god damn it i missed out on this opportunity tell us about the next one so good luck thank you so much thank you cool thank stuff you. and i do love i do love some of the art if nothing else so if you're an art collector mm -hmm. looking at this stuff because i mean frankly you know you're not going to be able to go and pull uh, a, a, a mona lisa off the wall of the louvre but you can buy something now that may be worth a lot of money in the future. And the nice thing about it is that you actually own the original. You can prove that you own the original in a way that you've never been able to before. And it's verified by millions of people all over the world. So it's absolutely 100% guaranteed to be yours, as opposed to something that you just bought off the street that someone might be able to claim was theirs all along. And you have nothing to prove uh, that it is yours, except the fact that you actually have it hanging on your wall. Anyway, guys, thank you very, very much. This That's is just the... Just the beginning of understanding NFTs and uh, Ben and Costa, it's a great pleasure to have you both on. 
Thanks and so I'll see I'll see you around soon. Awesome, That's awesome amazing. stuff, guys. Thanks so much. It's amazing. I'm watching um, a, a series called The Gilded Age, yeah, um, which is kind of trending at the moment, and it's set in 1882 New York, mm -hmm. when um, New York property was, um, you know, owned by a lot of the old money New Yorkers, and there were new mm. people coming in building mansions of yeah. kind of French style, mm -hmm. um, Versailles style. And the story mm. is based on um, some of the railroad tycoons um, and how they manipulated stocks to work in their favor. And you just think that was 1882, mm. 1982. So you're looking at 140 years ago. Um, yeah. And they were, they were cutting edge at the time. You know, yeah. they well, were talking why... about concepts that people didn't even understand. Well, mm. this is why I, I, I don't think you must be so quick to dis dismiss this stuff. If you don't want to understand that that's one thing, and I've said already, I, I don't get it. And I mean, I think I'm a little bit more well-informed thanks to, uh, to Ben and Costa. But the fact is, the only reason money is used to trade is because we all believe in it. Mm -hmm. right? It's because we all... Yes. There are, in, there are enough of us in the world who believe that giving a piece of paper with a number written on it to each other is essentially the way that we trade. If, if mm. enough people believe in NFTs, that could take the place of money. If enough people yeah. believe in Bitcoin, that could take the place of money. Yeah, if enough absolutely. people want to trade in gold, that, that'll take the place of yeah. money and has in the past. So don't yeah. dismiss it out of hand. You're being I mean, there had to be a point where you moved from physical cash to stocks. So... No, correct. You know, it has to happen. It's like when the internet came out and all the computers and things came out in the 90s or 80s and people were very technophobic and they said, I don't need that. My company's been running perfectly fine for now. Yeah, and now look right. at it. It's, I mean, correct. even online radio, look at Cliff Central. The online yeah. radio, people are locking it off and ta-da, now it's hey, the way to go. That's why I, I, I know, because there were people saying to me, you mad, this is never going to work. What the hell's wrong with you? And here we are eight years later. So I'm, I'm less likely to just dismiss something out of hand than I might have yeah. been when I was 22 and full of uh, vim and vigor. Anyway, it's exciting stuff. And if you want to get into it, you can tell us about it too. We'd love to know if you know somebody who's collecting something interesting, whether it's NFTs, whether it's gold, whether it's, you know, toys, it could be just about anything. Let us know about it. And Collectomania brought to you by the South African Gold Coin Exchange and the Scoin Shop. You can find out more from them by going to scoinshop.com. That's S in front of coinshop.com and if you're a collector of anything interesting or unusual or if you know somebody who is then drop us an email contact at cliffcentral.com that's it for this morning sunil great to see you again dude and we'll talk thank to you thank you very much we'll for having me always good and leanne mole we'll see you on friday Tot ziens, <laughs>